talking about the things that matter most to you. Catholic Women Now. Welcome to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson. Good morning. I'm Chris Magruder. And how are you, my friend? I'm doing well. Getting over a little bit of a cold. It's that kind of year. <laughs> it is. Should we start with prayer? Let's do that. In the name, in the, name of the Father, Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit to thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mother, Mother, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name Amen. of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Well, speaking of the Holy Mother, can I share my truth, beauty, and goodness portion today? Go right ahead. <laughs> Jumping right in here. Um, so I was watching, you know, over the holidays, I always like to watch old movies. And the one that I really appreciated just watching the other night with my mom, actually, and my husband was called An Affair to Remember with Cary Grant and Deborah Kerr. And it's just this visually beautiful movie, but it is also, you know, a heartwarming movie, too. And um, in it, there's a scene where they go into a chapel and they pray in front of the Holy Mother. And I was like, oh, you know, and I think these days they would have just uh, edited that scene right out because it wasn't necessary to the movie. But it just gave this moment of peace and grace. And it was interesting because they were silent before the the altar in the movie. And I was like, you wouldn't have that much silence in a movie these days. It was just beautiful. And so I I loved the way they honored her in that movie, you know, made the sign of the cross, you know, so they don't do that anymore in movies. So anyway, I appreciated that. It was beautiful. It's refreshing. it's refreshing to see that, isn't it? I mean, just yeah. like, stirs your soul. Mm -hmm. well, I um I have something for all you mothers out there who are tired and up in the middle of the night with your littles and finding yourself maybe being alone in that time. I found this, uh, there was a, uh, her name is Leanne Bowen. She's a Catholic artist. And she spent some time with the Norventine sisters that uh, reside in California. And she was just taking, she was being part of their day. When they prayed, she would pray. And so she was following the schedule. And then she noticed that um, there was something on the schedule. They're, they were gathering for a prayer that wasn't on her schedule. And it was called the Matins at 12 a.m. And so she was confused by what, what this was, since it wasn't on her schedule, but it was obviously on the sister's schedule. So she asked a sister. And the Norbertine sister explained, yes, that prayer is long. It's for an hour. And that's when we intercede for moms. It is our motherhood hour where we get up with you. And it's, Leanne Bowen says that, She's a tired mother herself. She said that just brought tears to her eyes. So she just said, all those nights where I felt so alone, so tired and withered, these sisters have been there awake with me. And they were with me, and I never knew it, hidden away in their quiet, heroic way, interceding. Isn't that beautiful? Wow, I love that. And I know so many young women right now who are new moms, and it's it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, well, you know, those are moments that I remember. It was hard. I don't remember the details, but I do remember thinking, when will this pass and feeling very <laughs> low sometimes in the night by all your, by yourself. And I would pray, but it's just nice to know that you got, we got a whole group of Normatine sisters praying for all you moms out there. So no kidding. And you know what? I mean, just even as grandma, I've had those moments where I feel that for my, my daughter and granddaughter, you know, you kind of go, Oh, but you don't want to wish those moments away ladies. Cause they're just special and precious. Truly. Yes. Really, really. Amen. Well, today we, our show is about the wonders of the holy name of Jesus. And um, Chris and I were kind of prompted to do this show because recently the church, well, the church celebrates the optional um, memorial, uh, memorial of the holy name of Jesus on January 3rd. So that was just recently and we were at mass and there were some beautiful things said by Father Michael and Chris, you, you, you captured them so well about the, well, I, I think what just stood out to me that day, I was praying for some specific things and Father Michael. Aqua um, on the feast day in his homily mentioned some of those things that I'd been praying for. And, and one of them also that stood out to me was because I thought everybody would appreciate this. He talked about how Jesus's name is a powerful gift of protection, actually. You know, so and we'll, we're going to talk some, about maybe some personal experiences with using Jesus's name in prayer, that is reverently um, and, and saw some of those gifts of protection, actually, that came because of that. So and then there are other ones that. Um, we will refer to and some testimonies that we've read about that I'm excited to share. 
I, I agree. So one of the things that I think it's always so beautiful to do is to go to scripture because that's God's word, right? And yes. what uh, what's revealed to us to from in scripture, either through Jesus words or the words of his disciples. And Chris, you have a great one here. I think, well, I think the one, um, you know, that, that, um, is often used by a ministry that I'm a part of is John 14 verses 13 and 14. And it just says, whatever you ask in my name, I will do so that the father may be glorified in the son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And so I think that's just something, I mean, he's, he's making us a promise there. You know, and we, I mean? can, we can stand I, I, God's promise. We can yeah. stand in God's promise and he promises he's going to follow through. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I think that one thing that really kind of mind bends my, my thinking is thinking about all the things that Jesus did, mm-hmm. all the things he did while he was here on earth. He healed people. He delivered people. He, you know, he helped their faith. I mean, so many things that he did. And he's saying we can do those too in his name. Yeah, everything about our Lord's name is holy. And and I think it started with Archangel Gabriel, who first spoke, you know, to Mary and and asked her, you know, and, and he said what Jesus's name would be. But what we have to remember is the Archangel Gabriel was just a messenger. So it came from the Father. He was giving the Father's message to Mary and saying, his name will be Jesus. So he was the first one to even say it. I love right. that. Mm-hmm. I love that too. Mm-hmm. In Acts chapter three, verse six, St. Peter um, you know, was one of the first apostles to speak with authority in the holy name of Jesus. And if you all recall, he had healed a crippled man by saying, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have, I give you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise up and walk. And this is a cripple that stood at, that was at the temple door steps day after day. And he was very familiar with the, to the apostles and he was begging for money and Uh they, and look what he got. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Chosen on that. Sorry, Julie, I'm interrupting you. Um, if, (laughs) If you kept reading on in acts, the very next chapter in acts four, um, you know, Peter and John are arrested for healing the guy and they, the authorities, because they understand that names have power, they wanted to know what name, you know, they were using. And they said, you know, Jesus is the name. Basically, Peter boldly tells them in the name of Jesus. You know, I, I, I spoke and um, he says, and by the way, not only did we heal him, but he tells these authorities that salvation itself comes from the name of Jesus. And, you know, that that would have been a huge, bold statement. But I mean, right there, you know, right away, the apostles are out there you know, teaching, healing, but sharing boldly. And it's his name that will actually save you, you know, kind of thing. Amazing. Amazing. Exactly. Well, we're up again. We're going to take a little break here. And when we come back, we're going to talk about some things historically we've seen uh, in our church that um, miracles that happen in all different kinds of ways. And then we're going to share some personal experiences and just a little bit more how to foster this great love of the name of Jesus. You're listening to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from A New Look Exteriors, an Anderson certified contractor providing custom window installations, roofing, siding, gutters, concrete, and more to help give your home a new look. Learn more at a anewlookexteriors.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by the Sarah Vocations Ministry, including the St. Sarah Club of Des Moines and the Sarah Club of Council Bluffs. Sarah is an apostolate of the Worldwide Catholic Church dedicated to fostering and supporting priesthood and religious vocations. Sarans strive to accomplish their mission through prayer, fellowship, and service to the bishop, priests, sisters, and all in religious formation, and in doing so to increase their own holiness. Learn more at joinsara.org, join org. Thank you, Sarans, for your support of Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for programming has been provided by Permar Security Services, a family-owned security company that provides full-service security solutions to homes and businesses throughout the Midwest. Learn more at permarsecurity.com. Thank you, Permar Security Services, for supporting Iowa Catholic Radio. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Next Generation Realty, a Catholic and family-owned flat-fee brokerage serving central Iowa since 1994. Next Generation Realty can handle every step of the process of buying or selling a home. Learn more at nextgenerationrealty.com. 
Support for programming comes from Klein Electric, a local family-oriented electrical contractor, a 100% employee-owned company with branches across the Midwest to provide comprehensive electrical services. Klein Electric is able to help with any residential and commercial project. Learn more at kleinelectric.com. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now with myself, Chris Magruder, and my good buddy, Julie Nelson. We're a little unplugged today. We are unplugged today as we were talking about the holy name of Jesus. And so I want to start with how St. Paul said in Philippians, at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend of those in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And I think that's something, Julie, that there is so much power in just speaking the name of Jesus. I mean, Speaking his name out loud brings us close to him. It gives us strength. It can um, cast out fear. I know it gives trust to me. You know, it, it can unite. It protects. It heals. We've seen a lot of healing through the name of Jesus. Um, it can console. And we know that it also helps the souls in purgatory. You know, there is so much going on in this simple prayer. And as you talk about that, we, and, and I think about who of us would want all these things. And all we have to do is a simple prayer, but we have to do it with love. We have to do it with great love and a great holy confidence. I mean, to just go out there and say, oh, man, I, I just I need to have this like Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. No, it's got to be, be spoken here very reverently. Um, we don't want to blaspheme. God's word, right? We don't want to blaspheme the word of God. So I think that's another important point when we're doing this is that to have that reverence in our heart, that love for Jesus in our heart, and really trust that he's going to stand on his promise to us and mm -hmm. answer and mm -hmm. answer. So, and it can produce the most wonderful results. Like you talked about consoling, it, you know, the weakest sinner can become strong. I mean, if you're someone's struggling with a sin, say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. I mean, you Jesus, 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 help me. That's, mm -hmm. that's very powerful. So well, I, I like all what you said and what the name does for us, the holy name of Jesus. And the other thing that, I mean, some of the things that you and I have been a little bit of research on the holy name of Jesus is that we found that in the past, people not only would use it as a prayer out loud, but they would write it on pieces of paper. They would. And, you know, I love that idea. And I think we should do a sticky note campaign. <laughs> Put Jesus, 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 and 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 put them all, all put them everywhere, you know, <laughs> out and about everywhere. But uh, that could be very powerful, and maybe we are supposed to do that, right? Maybe uh, take me up I, on my challenge. I will. I love that idea. We're gonna have to talk about that after the show and figure out how we can make that happen. I know. I've thought about. Well, I digress. I thought about getting cards printed up. But you know what? I think another, I think what would be really great for our listeners to hear, because it was helpful for you and I, Chris, is the examples of the power of Jesus throughout our church history, and then share some of our modern day in our own lives or some of our friends' lives. And yeah. one of the ones that I thought was powerful, I mean, there's several, but one of them was when um, in the year 1274, the church was being attacked by enemies and Pope Gregory X was kind of like, ah, what do we do? So he called the bishops together and they prayed about it and they decided that the quickest, most efficacious way to do it is to promote the name of Jesus. So they, the priests, the pre bishops asked their priests to preach about the holy name of Jesus and then they had Dominicans come and t preach about it and it brought peace to the church. The enemies were overthrown and peace once more reigned supreme. That That's something that is good to hear for today, for sure. Because sure. you know, we're seeing things throughout the world that are frightening. So, um, yeah. Yeah. And, and speaking of being, uh, frightening, I mean, even the gift of being able to say his name when you're frightened, you know, to bring calm is, is such a blessing. Um, there, there was a Dominican bishop, actually, um, he ended up being a Chinese martyr, actually, but he was dragged through a marketplace. He was stripped um, with the rough edged swords. It talks about how um, they chopped off his fingers one by one, joint by joint, then his arms, then his legs. Of course, he was in excruciating agony. And finally, they started hacking the flesh off of his bones. I mean, it's just so gory. But the whole time, he remained smiling and peaceful as he just repeated, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. And the executioners were completely amazed at his strength. Um, but he he lived with it. He died with a smile on his face saying, Jesus, 
as they basically ripped him apart. I mean, wow. I mean, that is really miraculous. True. Well, I one of the one examples that I kind of really was drawn to is um, I'm going to ask this question of our listeners. Do you find yourself not thinking you're a qualified speaker to debate someone on the faith? How many times do we think, Oh, I can't, I can't talk to this person. They're so smart and they're so knowledgeable or whatever, but you are in good company with St. Alexander. St. Alexander was the Bishop during the time of Constantine. And we do know that was the period where Constantine brought um, uh, religious Liberty back to the people. And he was, um, Going to, he was debating a very uh, well-renowned atheist pagan philosopher, and but he didn't know what he was going to say to him, and so he let the philosopher go on and on. And then when um, it was time, he said, "All he did was pronounce the name of Jesus, Jesus, Jesus," and that confounded the philosopher that he couldn't complete. He lost his thread of thinking. He couldn't complete the discourse. Mm. It was wow. very disarming. Well, there's a there's a lot of evils that the name of Jesus will deliver us from, you know, the power of the devil. You just start saying his name. But um, one that I'm pretty sure we've talked about on our radio show before, but I'm going to repeat it for anybody that hasn't heard it before, because there was a plague in Lisbon, Portugal, in 1432, and people were literally dying in the streets. I mean, and it was just they they recorded it saying that it, the plague was like lightning from one person to the next, that somebody might be sick or excuse me, well in the morning, and then by dinner time they'd be sick. But um, I thought it was cool because they had uh, the bishop at the time said, okay, what we're going to do is we're going to start saying the name of Jesus and um, write it on paper, like we were talking about earlier, put it under your pillows, put it in your pillowcases, wear it on your person, just keep the name of Jesus on you. And within three days, and this has been going on for a while, this plague, within three days, the plague was wiped out. I and, then it, and then it spread through all of Portugal and all of Portugal was eradicated of the plague. Yes. It's and then incredible. because of that, his holy name spread not only all the way through their country, but through France and Spain as well. So the holy name of Jesus became, you know, well known and the power of it. Pretty awesome. So I, I have one more I have to share because this one really touched my heart. And it's about St. Christina. She was a young Christian girl who was a slave in an area called Kudistan, which was uh, entirely pagan. And it was a custom at that, that time that if a child was ill, the mother would take the gravely ill child to friends and ask them if they knew of any remedy that might cure the little one. Well, um, so one on one occasion this happened. A mother was taking her gravely ill child to friends to know about his remedy. Well, um, she came upon St. Christina and St. Christina looked at the child and just said, Jesus, Jesus. And in an instant, the dying child smiled and leapt with joy and the child was cured, but it didn't end there. So news of this spread to the queen and the queen had had an, um, was an invalid. And so she called for St. Christina to come. And so St. Christina prayed the words of Jesus over her and she was healed. And then later on, the king himself started to have some health issues and called upon uh, uh, St. Christina and um, called for her. And he, and then he he was healed. And so then he learned the truth, the Christianity, and a great multiple of people became Christians because of that. Wow. All, and you know, this all, is, yeah, all in the name of Jesus with yeah. reverence and love. This is what we can do too. And we we need this now. We need to be reminded of this today. And and into the future, we're going to need Jesus's name more and more. So, um, well, friends, you are listening to Catholic Women Now on Iowa Catholic Radio Network. We will be back in a moment with some personal stories and some other ways um, that you might want to pray with Jesus. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Fitness by Design, your neighborhood fitness studio located in Des Moines, offering pH or fitness classes, private and semi-private training, beamer and massage. Learn more at fitnessbydesigndm.com, 515-770-3844. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from the Catholic Tuition Organization. Reduce or eliminate your Iowa income tax and instead give to the Catholic Tuition Organization and receive 75% Iowa tax credits. These tax credits are going fast, so reserve yours today and learn more about the Catholic Tuition Organization at ctoiowa.org. ctoiowa.org. The bottom line, it's for the kids and their futures. Catholic Tuition Organization, a great investment in our kids. 
Support for programming is provided by construction professionals, serving customers through a proven process creating unique design, functionality, and artistic beauty. Construction Professionals is a Catholic family business built on a strong foundation. cpcustomhomes.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by Skeffington's Formal Wear. In business since 1951, with locations in Des Moines, West Des Moines, Coralville, and Ankeny. Skeffington's Formal Wear, fitting you for life celebrations. Online at skeffingtons.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio comes from Mercy One. Live your best life with Mercy One. With Iowa's largest network of care locations, personalized care is right in your neighborhood. Schedule online at mercyone.org. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now here on Iowa Catholic Radio. I'm Julie Nelson, joined by Chris Magruder, and we're speaking about the wonders of the holy name of Jesus. And uh, we've talked a little bit about some beautiful fruits and miracles miracles have happened in our church with the holy name of Jesus. But now we're going to kind of shift a little bit, talking about some personal stories in real life and how this can apply to our lives right now. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, and I, I've, I've mentioned a couple of these on the show before, but I had an experience one time where um, my dog and I were on a walk. I have a little dog and two big dogs came running out and were barking at my dog and they were vicious. It was nerve wracking. And not until I said the name of Jesus, did they scatter, but they left as soon as I said, Jesus, Jesus, they both left. And I thought, oh, wow, that's amazing. And then, um, you know, I, I think both of us, Julie, have had experiences where we've prayed in the name of Jesus for people that needed healing. And I know right. just recently I, I prayed with the man um, who was having numbness in his feet. And, you know, at the name of Jesus, the feelings came back. So um, it's just, and it's, you know, we have to remember it's not us, it's Jesus. That is like a cardinal um big thing with healing ministry is always in the name of Jesus, always in the name of Jesus. But that's our church teaching because the church ends the prayers with, through Jesus Christ. Think of how many times at mass we say a prayer or the priest will say a prayer and it's always through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, that's how important. Yeah. And even reverently, because, you know, the priest in mass, for example, whenever he says Jesus's name, you'll notice that he'll bow. And I actually have friends that every time they say Jesus, they bow their heads. You know, it's, oh, it's, that's a, good, beautiful. it's a good practice. Well, I know when my kids were little, you know, um, being kind of to that point of exasperation with trying to calm a child, you can't, you know, they're not at the age of reason. I remember um, holding one really um trying to be peaceful with him, kind of calm him down. And I just said those words ger- gently and calmly. And they started calming, this child started calming down. And I just remember thinking, oh my gosh, it works. <laughs> <laughs> it works, Lord, it works. <laughs> it was like a, it was a conviction for me. And, and, and I, and I know that for you listeners, you will experience this too. We have to pray with that expectant faith and stand on God's promise. Yeah, this will happen for you too as well. Yeah. God's grace is so abundant and he makes it so simple for us, doesn't he? Yes. And this is part of the happiness he wants for us. These are the graces he wants to give to us through the holy name of Jesus. Yes. Yeah. And you know, and it, it is important these days that we're reminded of this because, uh, you know, of all the things that we know that are going on around us, we, uh, you know, sinners and saints, we are all going to need to you remember this prayer, the name of Jesus and how not only powerful it is, but, you know, to say it in love and to know that it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with you. It has everything to do with our Lord who wants to love us, who wants to heal us, who wants us to remember him and to just very simply say his name very simply. Yeah. And I, I just think sometimes we kind of have to go back to this thought about what, what precious graces are we losing every day by not availing ourselves to this yes. beautiful devotion? And it's so simple. That's yeah. the thing. And sometimes I think it might be hard to to think that this can work, that, that there will be graces, there'll be miracles, because it's so simple. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but there are times where, you know, the words might not come. And there are times where you, you may want to, you see someone and, you, and they, they want prayer and you can see that they need healing. You don't, oh, I don't have these healing prayers like these people do over here. Or I don't pray like them. Well, it's not about that. I mean, that's our pride coming in, if you really want to know. But it's about just turning to Jesus and just saying those beautiful, his beautiful name over and over and over again. And it's, it's for all of us. It's like what you 
quoted from uh, Matthew 14. Mm -hmm. You can do all the works that I have done and even greater. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. But I think one of the things that um, Father Carlos Martin, who is an exorcist and he has the uh, collection of saint relics and he's been here in the in the des moines area with his traveling relics um he posts every year on the memorial of the holy name of jesus his post on blas blasphemy and one of the things he said in there this i think this really kind of drives the point home of how powerful the name of jesus is and how reverent we should should um receive it and 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 reverent reverence it um he said that you know he's an exorcist and that um neither father carlos or nor any of the exorcists he knows has ever witnessed a demon trash talk the name of god now he says now we regularly witness them claim to be god we witness them show disdain for what god loves and we witness them ridicule god's authority but neither father carlos nor any exorcist he knows has ever observed them disrespect his name Mm. Now, if if demons know, why aren't we availing ourselves to this? Why, why, what, why, you know, this the belief, this is the yeah. belief we should have. So he calls it blasphemy. That's what it is. And he says it's a domain where evidently even the demons will not tread. Yeah. You Who know, it's funny, it, it's funny because, I mean, the evil one will tempt us to invoke and, and use his name in anger and, you know, and, and misuse it. Um, go to, run to confession, friends, if that happens. Um, but I, it, it is one, it is, you know, there's swear word. I don't like any swear words, but there, you know, that's one that really bothers me to the point that I was at a game, um, a football game in the last year and somebody used his name irreverently. And I, without even thinking, I turned and looked at him. And I said, that's enough. And I noticed the man had a, a cross around his neck. He looked at me like he was stunned, but he didn't, he didn't do it. And I, you know, I, I'll shake his hand and we'll high five, you know, I'll, but that I think sometimes we just have to be reminded. Well, and Father, I, didn't, I didn't even oh. think about it, but it just came out of me. <laughs> Holy audacity. But Father Carlos talks about that in the confessional. He'll hear people come in and confess these, um, you know, sins and, and then um, the little sins. And then we'll even use the name and confessional Jesus's name in a, in a, inappropriately. And um, they don't even realize they're blaspheming. He calls them out on it. I don't think people know. People mm -hmm. don't know that's, that's blasphemous. That's a, that's a grave sin. And ask, father Carlos said, that's a graver sin than some of the other sins they bring. Yeah. So, but you know, okay. we, we, we're out of time. It goes so fast, but I do want to, um, we want to point out a book that we got a lot of our information from. It's a little tiny pot, pocket sized booklet. It's called the wonders of the Holy name by father, Paul Sullivan. And you can get it at divine treasures. I'm sure. And you can get it online at town publishers. And we highly recommend that as a resource. Yeah. Well, let's yes, in prayer. Yes. Um, let, let's bring the Holy name, um, to every corner of our lives so that all of our loved ones may acknowledge alongside of us and keep that name even written down in your pocket when you're in meetings and you can't talk, um, write his name down, carried on you. And let's just pray his name together today. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. In your name, Jesus, we love you and we pray, amen. In the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Now go do impossible things with God. Today's Catholic Women. On the voice for Catholic Women Now. Iowa Catholic Radio. Catholic Radio.